All right, this is Jeremy Schiefling. Welcome to Steal This Hack. I am so thrilled to have Lindsay Pollock on the show today because I got to tell you, Lindsay was my own career guru back in the day when I was first getting my start at LinkedIn. And she's really shown me and millions of people around the world how to launch a great career. So Lindsay, we are so thrilled to welcome you to the show. It's my pleasure. I'm thrilled to see what you're doing and uh, you've always been a star. Oh, this is amazing. So um, as always, We've got amazing folks around the world sharing their best tools, their best hacks. What do you want to share with our listeners today, Lindsay? So in addition to being a career advice author and speaker, I am a brand ambassador for a company called Capfinity, and they are the world's leading expert on discovering and using your strengths. And that word is kind of confusing to people. Strengths are skills that you have that give you energy. So you're not just good at something, it really makes you happy to do it. And they've given me an exclusive tool on my website to share with all of my viewers and uh, followers to help you discover your strengths. Oh, I love it. Well, with that being said, if you're okay, I'd love for you to share your screen so we can actually see what Capfinity looks like. Fantastic. So here we are on my website, lindsaypollock.com slash SP is the direct link. S is in strengths, P is in profile, powered by Capfinity. And if you just scroll down here, you'll see what this looks like. When you click on find out my strengths, it'll be about a 10 minute question and answer. Go with your gut and you will end up with this little quadrant. And I'm going to just uh, increase my screen so you can see what it looks like. You're going to get four different areas of strengths. There's 60 strengths overall, and they're all going to fit into these categories. Your realized strengths, which is what you're good at and you love it. So these are your absolute top skills and strengths. Mine is narrator, number one, not surprising, writer, storyteller, et cetera. So things that you just love to do and you get the flow. Bottom quadrant on the right is weaknesses, things you don't like to do and you're bad at. So we all kind of know what these are too. Like, I know I hate that stuff. I don't like to do it. It drains me. But I find the two other quadrants really interesting. Bottom left is learned behaviors. That's what you're good at, but it actually drains you. So sometimes if you were good at math in school and you became an accountant, you're like, I'm good at this, but why am I not happy? Mm. That gives you some insight into the fact that you have the skill, but you don't have the drive. And the top right corner is unrealized strengths. And this is where I really recommend people focus, particularly if you're a career changer, or if you're kind of unhappy in your job. These are things you're good at and give you energy, but you don't realize how good you are and how much energy these give. And I'll tell you from my own one of mine was connecting people. It's something I do, I like to do, but I didn't really think about doing it actively. Now I spend a lot more of my time saying, Jeremy, you should really meet so-and-so because uh -huh. I love to do it. I'm good at it and it gives me energy. And on the learn behaviors, I realized there are things I could do, but maybe I'm better off delegating or outsourcing them because even though I'm capable, it's gonna really drain me. Does this speak to you, Jeremy? I love this. This is almost like a SWOT analysis for a person versus an organization. Absolutely. And what I think is so powerful about it is that it's actionable. It'll come with a little description of how to use these strengths more. And like the delegation example, what to do if you find a strength in one category and you say, well, that's something that's part of my job. What do I do about it? The guide will tell you some of that. But my biggest takeaway has been do the stuff that makes you happy acknowledge it, enjoy it, add it to your day, and try to lessen the stuff that doesn't. It sounds obvious, but when you see it here in the quadrants, it makes it really clear. This is great. And so, you know, we we're just talking with a guest in our last episode about Clifton Strengths Finder, which I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are familiar with. And I have to say, those attributes are a little more vague, right? You know, a little more woo-woo, if you will. These seem very specific, you know, relationship deepener, steam builder, things like that. Is this the kind of thing that someone could basically just pick up and run with? Or is it better Absolutely. to use in conjunction with a coach? You could do both. Um, it's interesting you mentioned Clifton Strengths or Myers Briggs, uh, MBTI. I've done all of those. I have never met an assessment I didn't want to take. <laughs> so I love all that stuff introvert, extrovert, firstborn child, all that. What's different about this is that unrealized strengths and the learned behaviors. Most assessments say you're good at this, you're not good at this. Mm. But this addition of what do you actually enjoy? You could be so, 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 so good at something, but it drains you. You also could be really good at something and it used to be a strength, but it has started to drain you. So one example is a lot of academics are very, very, very good writers, but they've almost overused the muscle. Mm. And so when you do the assessment, 
it sort of helps explain why something you used to love is no longer supporting you. So I actually do this once every year or two to kind of reassess where I am and not assuming like some of the other profiles do that everything is set in stone. Oh, I love that. And so give an example, maybe, you know, you already gave an example from your own life in terms of making those introductions, maybe someone that you've seen go through this process, give them a, give us people a sense of how they could actually apply it and the change they could expect from it. Great question. And I think you can do this alone. The report will come with some of these suggestions, but if you work with a coach, this is a great tool. One example I think comes from the idea of confidence, which I see mm. lacking in a lot of people who are not happy in their jobs or with uh, job seekers. Uh, there was a woman who uh, volunteered a lot and uh, worked in uh, psychology and social work, and she had a very high uh, strength of empathy. Mm. And she said, well, doesn't everybody have that? And I said, absolutely not. You are so good at that. And it is so powerful to you that it almost came too easily to her. But when she was able to see, wow, the vast majority of people have a different combination than you, she was able to realize in job interviews and cover letters and on her LinkedIn profile that she should talk about her empathy more because it really was a differentiator. I love that. I do think that, again, a big differentiator for this tool versus a strengths finder and MBTI is that frequency of use too. That really looking in the mirror and saying, okay, I've taken for granted that I'm good at this thing, but I never get to use that muscle. How do I build it into my schedule? And so maybe one last question for you, Lindsay, is if you see that there's something in that upper right quadrant, unrealized strength, this is kind of like the gold mine for this tool. How do you even start to incorporate that? What are some tips for bringing it into your life? I have a great little hack. Um, I have an assistant and we do a weekly call. So many of us in some capacity have someone we check in with. One of my unrealized strengths was courage, that I like to be brave. I like to do things that push me out of my comfort zone. So every week, my assistant Eileen says, what did you do this past week that was courageous? And so she kind of keeps a check on me to be accountable for using that strength. And it's not only been helpful, but it's also been really fun to have someone kind of check and make sure that it I'm using the strengths that I am good at and that actually do make me happy. I love that. An accountability partner for a great mm -hmm. life and for playing to your strengths. Yes. And so I know we have a very short podcast and we want to keep it really focused, but for folks who are already salivating and saying, Lindsay, <laughs> how do I get started with this? Does it cost money? Where do I go? Give them all the details. Yeah. The full Capfinity Strengths profile does cost money, but they have made this version free if you go through my website lindsaypollock.com slash SP as in strengths profile. So any friend of Jeremy, any friend of mine can get this mini profile. You're free to download and you can click through right on the website where it says, find out my strengths. That is amazing. Thank you so much for building that partnership, Lindsay, and especially for sharing it with us. I think that is the perfect way to start off this new year by understanding yourself and then finding that match out there in the world. Okay. One last question for you, Lindsay. If folks want to learn more about you in general, in terms of some of the books you've published, the speaking engagements you do, where can they learn more? Thank you for that. I am the author of four books all about uh, career and workplace success from getting your first job out of college to being a leader. I am also the proud author of the foreword of Jeremy and his <laughs> co-writer Omar's book, Link. So be sure to check that out. You can find all of this on my website, lindsaypollock.com. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Lindsay, and good luck to everyone out there. Here's wishing you an amazing new year.